Hi, I'm Phil Hill and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today we're here with Jennifer Campbell from the University of Toronto, so welcome. Thank you. You've got a research uh, project grant from the MOOC Research Initiative, so could you tell me what is the project about? Absolutely, so uh, our research is looking at how MOOCs are used uh, when they're archived. Okay. So uh, essentially we, we offer these MOOCs, there's sort of this live offering, the start date, and learners progress through the through the MOOC and then it yeah. ends and what we notice is that people continue to sign up beyond sure. the end of the course so and I mean not just a few but many many so we're still seeing something like a thousand people a week signing up for these courses long after they've actually taken place and have uh -huh. finished so we're interested in learning about what they're doing are they are they progressing through the course in the same way that the live learners are or are they just sort of picking and choosing here and there and and uh, we're interested in exploring sort of how it's being used and whether it's meeting the needs of the learners. And so by looking at this in this uh, interesting population yes. of students, um, what are you hoping to learn by looking at this data? So we're hoping to learn a little bit about different ways that MOOCs can be used not and, and find out whether they need to be offered live, whether there's an advantage there sure. for the learning uh, in terms of the instructor support that's being offered so often when MOOCs are live, instructors are sending reminder emails and there are firm deadlines and there's this discussion forum, so there's a community and a cohort. And we're wondering whether that environment is helping people succeed. So does sure. it help get them through the course with maybe lower attrition rates than what would happen in an archive course where someone might intend to, to do it, but no one really is noticing if, if you know, if they fall behind and, and they're not able to, they lose, um, and they lose their momentum and, sure. and aren't keeping up, then, then nothing is moving on, right? There's no, no next deadline that sort of, they need to uh, finish this work in order to, to work towards the next deadline. So yeah. we're hoping to see uh, a bit more about, about uh, whether, whether the live offering is offering something extra that beyond just perhaps the opportunity to earn a statement of accomplishment mm -hmm. and, and to see whether maybe we can think of MOOCs in a different way, which is as a, an, a resource, the way a textbook is sure. being used. So something that people go to here and there and use it for remedial learning or as a, as a way to learn one particular topic. Uh, sure. And it doesn't matter whether it's live, whether you just go and you, you re watch a short sequence or do one exercise or assignment mm -hmm. to, to see whether uh, there's some benefit and from that angle as well, not just as a live course, but as more of an offline, so to speak, sure. <laughs> resource that they're using uh, for some other purpose. Got so if you uh, look beyond just this demographic, given your experience analyzing mm -hmm. MOOCs, um, what do you hope uh, more broadly that we'll know about MOOCs a year from now that we don't really know about today, or what are you hoping that we find yeah, out? Yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping to see uh, a progression. So I think at first there was a lot of hype about MOOCs, about it, it's serving all these different populations and perhaps opening a lot of doors. And I think that now, I, what I hope is a more grounded, <laughs> realistic view, Productive which is conversation, what, yeah. can, what can they be used for? And we've, we've seen them offered live. Um, from from our course, we hope to see what the, whether they can be offered as a as a sort of different kind of resource. Mm -hmm. But more generally, I think that I'd like to see how they're going to fit into the higher education scheme across North America and around the world. How do MOOCs fit in? Are they going to be more integrated into the the class? Are there different ways that they can be used in terms of not just higher ed but also sort of K to twelve? Uh, and, and figuring out where MOOCs have a place in this landscape sure. of education. Sure. Not alone over here sure. as this new and uh, sort of standalone thing, but integrated with the rest of the work that we're doing. Um, the inverted classroom sure. is something else that's quite interesting. Uh, seeing if we can integrate them into our on-campus courses, so many, many materials that are produced. So it sounds like very interesting research on a group that's really not that well understood within the MOOC, um, within the MOOC ecosystem. So I want to thank uh, Jennifer Campbell for being here today, and appreciate it. 